we have before us the latest MacBook Pro 16, M1 Pro, and M1 Max versus the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. And just so nobody's left out, the Lenovo Legion 7. Okay, so these are three laptops, well, technically four, if you count the MacBook Pro as being two different laptops with different spec settings, that people are wanting to know which one should I buy? And here are the benchmarks that are gonna be coming up in just a few minutes. Now we're gonna jump first into the build quality and usability of these two laptops, talk about the pros and cons of each, and then understand which one you should pick regarding performance alone later in the video. All right, now getting into it, we have an aluminum build quality in the top cover, keyboard deck, and bottom cover of the Legion 5 Pro, as well as the Legion 7, okay? I'm gonna do my best to include the Legion 7, but we all know Legion 7, Legion 5 Pro, um, you can look at my full review if you want to know about the ins and outs of the Legion 7. The Legion 5 Pro seems to be the more popular laptop, so that's why I'm more featuring this one, but this one will show up in the benchmarks at the end of the video, and when we do the screen comparison, since this has a 16-inch screen. But there's a lot of similarities between the 5 Pro and the Legion 7. So, next we're looking over at the MacBook Pro, an aluminum build quality, very sturdy, very design aesthetic, Apple-esque as it were, okay? Thin and light obviously goes to the MacBook Pro. Much thinner, not a ton lighter, but definitely lighter about, well, actually it's probably about a pound lighter. So it is actually a ton lighter um, in the comparison of, you know, the laptop world. You have a vent along the left side panel, right side panel, and then a vent along the back of the chassis here. Small, discreet vents. Whereas on the Legion 5 Pro, we have a large vent on the right, large vent on the left vents along the back of the chassis, but no vent on the top cover of the laptop. Well, that's the top cover, the keyboard deck. Same as the MacBook Pro. But the MacBook Pro's vent kind of ends up being right here where the Legion 5 Pro does not. So you kind of have a vent on the top, but at the same time, it's just because it opens up and then the air can funnel through there. So, you know, tomato, tomato. Looking at the screen, as you can see, you have a taller aspect ratio screen for the MacBook Pro, okay? It's because of the bezel-less notch that you have this taller screen. Just slightly taller, but not by much. Now let's go ahead and slide the Legion 7 in here, and we'll compare it to the 5 Pro at first. As you can see, we have 16-inch screens on both the Legion 5 Pro and the Legion 7. Now let's compare it to the... MacBook Pro, once again, a slightly taller screen, but just by a hair, okay? So that's the big comparison between the screens. Now, the MacBook Pro is gonna be much brighter than both the Legion 7 and the Legion 5 Pro, and it's going to be more color accurate, but not by a ton. I was actually surprised how the color accuracy panned out on the MacBook Pro. I thought we'd have 100% across the board. We do not. We have 100% on the sRGB, but we don't have 100% on the Adobe RGB or DCI P3. And then of course, color gamut range is coming up as well on the screen, so you can see that. Now they both have webcams and the MacBook Pro webcam is substantially better. So here's a quick sample of the webcams for you. Here is a test of the webcam. It's a 1080p webcam. Check it out the audio as well to see if you like the webcam, see if it fits for your needs. It's definitely better than the crappy 720p webcams we've had forever. So I'm super stoked that Apple made this move for the 1080p. Here is the webcam on the Legion 5 Pro and a quick audio sample for you. Now, regarding the speakers on the laptop, MacBook Pro definitely wins. The upper facing speakers, they're newly improved, definitely a lot better speakers. And here's a quick audio sample of each of those for you. Using the keyboard on each of these laptops, they both have their unique, you know, victories. On the Legion 5, you have more of a gamer style laptop. It's gonna be a little bit quieter actually than the MacBook Pro, surprisingly. And then the trackpad is where things get quite a lot different. You have a massive trackpad on the MacBook Pro compared to the Legion 5 Pro and the Legion 7. Same trackpad on the Legion 7. <laughs> my voice is gone, I can't, <laughs> oh my gosh. I've lost my voice, so I'm doing my best to just plug through these videos and bring you guys value because I want to get these videos out to you guys. I know you guys have been asking for them. Okay, 
Keyboard, punch for punch, I prefer the MacBook Pro. It's slightly louder, but I don't need a numpad. I'm not a gamer, personally, so that really doesn't bring me a lot of value. But you still do have a full-size shift key on the Legion 5 Pro, which makes me happy. Uh, you have a fingerprint reader on the MacBook Pro, where you do not on the Legion 5. You know, what are your preferences? That's up to you. That's, that's really what it boils down to. Now, battery life is where the MacBook Pro takes leaps and bounds above the Legion 5 Pro, okay? And not only is the battery amazing on the MacBook Pro, but you're gonna get full performance capabilities at those battery lives, okay? The Legion 5 Pro will be diminished performance while on battery, all right? So you're not even gonna have full performance of the laptop. That's something that's really Apple only. Uh, there's a few Windows laptops, let me take that back. There's a couple Windows laptops that give you full performance while on battery, but they're gonna drain the battery really quickly. The efficiency of the latest MacBook Pro is the huge win that it comes with. The efficiency is absolutely incredible, and that's why you may be paying the extra money for this laptop, is you wanna be able to video edit while you are not on power, while you're not plugged into the wall, and that will be a big advantage to you. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of Legion 5 Pro, Legion 7, and MacBook Pros, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, let's go ahead and do a quick screen flex test and opening and closing the lids. Then we'll check out the ports and then we'll get into the performance benchmarks. Open and closing lids really easily with one hand, not a problem there. Screen flex is where the MacBook Pro is a beast. It totally dominates. No screen flex, it's crazy. And then on the Legion 5, we obviously have some screen flex there. Uh, screen wobble, they're actually about the same. Hmm, interesting. All right, now let's go ahead and check out the ports really quickly. On the Legion 5 Pro, we have our network jack, USB Type-C, two USB Type-A's, HDMI, USB Type-A, and our power port. On this side, we have the USB Type-A and a camera cutoff switch. On the other side, we have USB Type-C and a headphone jack. For the MacBook Pro, we have our MagSafe power port, two USB Type-C's, a headphone jack, and on the other side we have SD card slot, USB Type-C, and a HDMI. Now keep in mind the USB Type-C's on the Legion 5 Pro are not going to be Thunderbolt, where you're going to have Thunderbolt 4 on the MacBook Pro. Yahoo! Super fast transfer speeds on this laptop. I was able to transfer 120 gigs of B-RAW footage to the laptop from an SSD in two minutes and 22 seconds. Absolutely crazy. In the SD card slot, you're able to transfer 30 gigs of B-RAW from the SD card slot onto the laptop in one minute and 46 seconds. Super fast transfer speeds for the Thunderbolt and for the SD card slot. So that's, that's awesome. So efficiency of workflow is top notch. All right, without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks and we're gonna start in Cinebench R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core. Now, as you can see in R23, the Legion 5 Pro actually beats out the MacBook Pros, both of them. But as we move into Geekbench single core and multi-core, it's not even a competition. The MacBook Pro M1 Pro and M1 Max dominate over the Legion 5 Pro. Now, keep in mind that life is not run by simulated benchmarks, though it does give us an idea of how the laptop will perform. So let's get into After Effects. And in After Effects, you can see that the MacBook Pro M1 Pro and M1 Max are far above the Legion 5 Pro for the general After Effects benchmark. However, when we move into the After Effects render benchmark, we see the Legion 5 Pro step it up quite a bit over the M1 Max by about almost 100 points. So it's not dominating over it completely. It's not like in the 900s or 1000 for the Legion 5 Pro, but it is doing very well. Now, keep in mind that this is very much in line with what gaming benchmarks were seen from the MacBook Pro M1 Pro and M1 Max. We're seeing about a 25 to 35% decrease in performance from the RTX 3080. So in this circumstance, we're seeing about a 10 to 15% decrease in performance from the RTX 3070. And then this laptop here, the Legion 7, has an RTX 3060. So I hope that gives you a little bit of perspective on the benchmarks that you're seeing. We have the base model of both the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max, both base models so you can get a feel on what you have before you. 
Moving on to video editing, the export times on the MacBook Pro M1 Pro and M1 Max are good but not great. You can see the M1 Max is definitely better. They all do very well in export times out of Premiere Pro. Now, playback is something that we're seeing slightly improved results from the MacBook Pro M1. And the reason it's amazing is because you can run these results quietly and you can run these results on battery. Where as far as the results that you're seeing from the Legion 5 Pro and the Legion 7 are based off of being plugged into the charger. So you cannot run around on battery power and get these type of results. It's basically battery power versus on power. So it's just, that's where these laptops really split hairs. I'm gonna say it again, is this one is far more efficient, far more quiet. The thermals are far better than the Legion 5 Pro. All right, moving on to the thermal results. Speaking of, how we're gonna do this is I don't have actual fan modes to compare inside of the MacBook Pro. I have fan modes on the Legion 5 Pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the fan modes to show the different thermal limitations, uh, fan noise, and the export time. And for the MacBook Pro, how I'm gonna show the stress on the computer is I'm gonna show you uh, 1080p all the way up to 6K and how it handles each export and the thermals and fan noise and export time that come with each of those. That's how you can understand the stress test differences because I don't have fan mode control on the MacBook Pro. I hope that makes sense and I hope you enjoy those specific benchmarks. Now, moving on to DaVinci Resolve, you can see the export times coming up on the screen right now. I was actually shocked how well the MacBook Pros did in DaVinci Resolve. The Legion 5 Pro and Legion 7 are good in DaVinci Resolve as well, but the MacBook Pros did better. Now, as far as playback is concerned, all of the laptops at present do well with playback and Resolve. Resolve is a very well-optimized program, much better than Premiere Pro uh, for playback much better than Premiere Pro for playback, so good playback for each of the laptops. Now, moving on to Photoshop. What we're seeing in Photoshop is what I expected, and that was high thermal temperatures and fan noise out of the Legion 5 Pro and Legion 7. And by high, I mean high 60, 70, but the MacBook Pro ran all of the benchmarks at 41 degrees Celsius with no fan noise, okay? So what you're seeing is results based on a laptop running very cool and very quiet. Now the benefit of having the Legion 5 Pro is that it will allow you more performance, but it's gonna cost you in thermals and fan noise and power draining. This laptop over here, the MacBook Pros, you're gonna be able to run for, I think 10 hours was my battery life test result. And that was the score that we got with these two laptops. If you run the Legion 5 Pro on battery for the Puget System benchmark, you're going to get a substantially lower score. So the score that you're seeing is on power. Again, that's the big difference between these two laptops is efficiency and performance as far as thermals, fan noise, and battery life. Okay, overall, punch for punch, if you need to be on the go, the MacBook Pro is the way to go. It's much more efficient. You got a bright screen, you got great battery life. It just really has everything you need for the on-the-go creator. But if you're somebody who's often at your desk, you don't mind a little bit of fan noise and some thermal temperatures, which is actually kind of my life. I'm at my desk quite a lot. I rarely get out of the office. All my work takes place here in the office. I'd be fine with the Legion 5 Pro, as awesome as the MacBook Pro is. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you wanna miss out on the future episodes. I'll see you here in the next one. And regarding my voice, I lost my voice. <clears throat> Had a little bit of a cold and it just, it took me out. So thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll see you guys in the next video.